so I'm way down here anyway for the retaining wall. So this is going to take place in three stages. One, which is done. Two, which is going to be complicated. And three, I'm not going to do until the fall because, as you can see, I had a big trench between here and the, the kitchen to do this part of the ramp. For Tony and I to have built the castle is, is meaningless. It's all, everything is basically meaningless. The house is not just Peter Wing and it's not just Tony Wing, it's us together. So there's some reason for it, I don't know. Some people come and they, they flip out, they see a fantasy. Other people see something historical, other people see a museum. There are people say, I love it, but I couldn't live here. Everyone sees something different. I don't know. Like I said, all of this is totally meaningless anyway. Totally meaningless, except for the experience of being alive. Timing is everything. When I flipped this rock over and came and got it with my front end loader, the sun was setting. So the light came across this rock sideways, highlighting and shadowing these footprints. I spotted them from my tractor seat. A kid who studies this stuff came here and looked at them. We know what this guy was. He was in the Ubrantes, a carnivore. Does this footprint exist 170 million years ago? No, it exists right now, and that's what's strange. I was thinking that 170 million years from now, nobody's going to be thinking about us, nobody. We ain't leaving nothing behind. Twenty-nine years ago, there was nothing here. This was a cow pasture on my father's farm, and I kind of fell in love with this corner of the farm at an early age in that view. When I was 17, I was ejected from school, so I joined the Navy, and I did end up in the Vietnam War. After seeing 63 shipmates get killed and getting home at the age of 21, I made a decision never to listen to anyone ever again, and I think the building sprang from that attitude of me falling away from society. My wife and I came up here in 1969 with a borrowed bulldozer. We dug a big hole on the 4th of July because the guy took off for a four-day weekend and let us have the machine. What you're looking at has been built by myself, my wife, and finally my children helping. It is also built with 80% recycled material. At the time, the original intent for the structure was an old barn with two silos, but we had no design experience. We laid the silos out too big around to give them living space, not realizing that they would look like castle towers instead of silos. When that happened, we just simply said, why not? been all kinds of people here. A lot of entertainment people, actors. I get all kinds of film students here and people that want to be in movies and this, this is all good because uh, they have the energy and they have the, uh, the innocence.
This cement's for the bed and breakfast. And honey, honey, the eggs are nice, but is there a peculiar odor? Why no, dear, I don't know. All the stray cats that my kids have adopted come and use my sand pile as a litter box. I hate to tell you how much cat dung is actually in the mason area of this castle. We're off the coast of Vietnam, and we had this guy uh, in our, our squadron. His name was Rupert, and we used to tease this guy about his wife back home, who was probably, we said, with every other sailor and marine she could find, and we didn't stop. So one morning, I'm getting a cup of coffee, and he was sitting there, and he had a big knife, and he was cleaning out the suction cups of this, the flight deck shoes. And I go, hey, Rupert, how's your wife? Or I had a dream about your wife. I said, something of that nature. He looked up at me, and I could see that he had gone. His eyes were there, but he wasn't, or something. And he pulled up that knife, and I said, son of a gun, he's going to kill me. And he came up with that knife, and I dropped the coffee, and I headed for the hatchway. Of course, I tripped, and he was raking that knife down my back. And uh, he ripped my, my coat <laughs> down the middle a couple of times. And I tripped on that damn knee knocker. In other words, and I'm on a ship in the hatchway. I try to get through the hatch, and I trip. And he drove that knife right through my foot. And that's how I got wounded in the war. Uh, this I picked up uh, just before they bulldozed the old barn. It's a kip cutter from Waterloo, Iowa. And apparently you ran sheets of metal or something through or even fabric and you cut it here. It's cutting blades. But that's not why I got it. To me, it's uh, a pterodactyl head. That's the head, the skull shape, and his long beaky mouth. I find it interesting since early man, his boats, he painted eyes and mouths on the fronts of his boats to scare away evil spirits and sea monsters. The Polynesians still do it today to keep evil spirits away from the front of their vehicles. So I figure if it worked for them, it worked for me. And that's why I paint these uh, faces. It pushes away evil. Another thing they say, you know, oh, oh, you're a genius. Well, that's, that's a layman's term for removing all the work that my wife and I do. It's 1% thinking, and this whole business of our life is like 99% labor or work. I hate that word because it, it, it eliminates the 99% work, as if it goddamn comes easy to us. It doesn't. We work. My wife works. I work. We get hurt sometimes. Machines break down or you cut something and it don't work out the way you think. I'm a firm believer in work, but I was raised with a work ethic. And I think that's what's lacking in this country now. 